Welcome back to another episode of Dugout Talk. Uh, today is Friday, February 19th, uh, 2021. Uh, we are wrapping up the NL Central today. We're going to talk about the Cubs while we're at it. Uh, but first, we'll kind of jump into some uh, some baseball history. Today was a relatively quiet day um, in terms of baseball history. Nothing, nothing too crazy, nothing too big um, with with my baseball history here once we get this up. So today in 1946, this would be 75 years ago now. Uh, John, uh, then New York Giants um, infielder Danny Gardella. Uh, he became the very first Major League Baseball player to actually leave the league um, in favor of the Mexican League. Um, he went uh, south of the border. It was lowered by a salary of $10,000, which at the time was more than double the amount of Giants were offered. And a fun fact, um, in 1945, his last year with the Giants, he actually played with his brother, who I believe um, is Al Gardella. Neither of them had very notable major league careers. Mm-hmm. Um, unfortunately, I wasn't able to find any of uh, Danny Gardella's uh, Mexican League stats. Baseball reference didn't have them. Uh, but he did actually come back and play one more game in the majors in 1950 with the, the St. Louis Cardinals. So I thought that was really, I thought it was really interesting a day that, you know, is, is not, uh, not that crazy in terms of uh, history that's happened on it. I thought this was a cool little, cool little um, thing. It might be a cool little trivia question. Find out how yeah. many major leaguers have jumped from major leagues to the Mexican league. I can't think. I can't mm-hmm. think of anyone off the top of my head who's done it. Yeah, I know there have been it's, some I guys. Yeah. I know there have been some guys from the Mexican league who've come up to the majors, but as far as going mm-hmm. from major league to Mexican league, uh, I'm not entirely sure on that. So that is a really cool one. Um, mine happened in 1889, 122 wow. years ago today. Yeah, I mean, talk about not a very eventful day in history. <laughs> um, a group of baseball players led by John Ward, who was a star pitcher and shortstop, who would later go on to be a manager and a general manager. Uh, wow. They play the first set of games in Europe. Uh, the games took place in Napoli, in Napoli, Italy. Um, okay. This is a this is an old. Uh, old picture of John Ward there. Yeah. He was with the uh, the Providence Grays. That was the team he primarily played okay. for. He kind of hopped around back and forth between what was equivalent to Major League Baseball at the time and then to some independent, what it was equivalent to independent mm-hmm. leagues because Major League Baseball wasn't formed by this oh, yeah. point. Yeah. Um, but yeah, this, I thought this was a cool little Absolutely. thing. that 122 even though, years. <laughs> yeah, even though two years ago we played our first regular season games in Europe. It wasn't the Mm -hmm. first time we'd actually sent guys over overseas to play. So, yeah. All right. Uh, Looking at uh, kind of the Chicago Cubs additions and subtractions from this past off season, um, which I'm I'm so glad that I can now say this past off season. um, I, I take, I take the first day of spring training as the, last day of the off season. So <laughs> now with this past off season, some of the additions to the Cubs have made are actually relatively decent um, ads, relatively good low cost ads. Uh, Chalk Peterson, he figures to probably uh, factor into the starting lineup. Uh, you know, Wrigley's Wrigley's not a huge uh, hitting paradise, but you know, uh, we've seen what Kyle Schwarber can do. Jock Peterson, uh, maybe not the same type of uh, frame, but definitely the same type of approach at the plate. Um, he should be able to slide right in and he's actually a better fielder than Jock Peter than um, Kyle Schwarber as well. So he should be able to fill in um, relatively nicely. Uh, Jake Marisnik, another uh, backup outfielder, Matt Duffy's a nice uh, utility man. Uh, Idel, Idel Mero Vargas, uh, Philip Irvin, backup catcher, Austin Romine, Zach Davies, who they got in the U Darvish trade with uh, San Diego. Uh, you have Jake Arrieta, who's coming home. Uh, you know, he obviously was was the the star pitcher for their 2016 World Series run. Um, you know, he was a little scorned that the the Cubs didn't try to keep him. He went to Philadelphia. His run in Philadelphia wasn't necessarily memorable. Um, I'm sure Phillies fans are appreciative for what he did, but he is coming back to to the Cubs to essentially uh, put a cherry mark on his career. Uh, Trevor Williams, who they got uh, from the from the Pirates. Trevor Williams is probably going to be looking for a good bounce back season. I think it's very possible that he might get it too. 
Uh, I think that I think that playing with a, a more competitive team could uh, prove to be a good benefit for him. Uh, and then you have the the relief pitcher with one of the best mustaches in baseball. I don't know if he still has the handlebar uh, as of right now, but you know I love Andrew Chafin. Uh, Pedro Strope, who is, is kind of bounced around the league a little bit, and he's one of the be- I won't say one of the better, but he's one of the um, one of the one of the more good relief pitchers in baseball. Um, and then obviously Brandon Workman, who's recently been with Philadelphia and Boston, um, he figures to factor into their middle middle late innings as well. Uh, looking at their subtractions, the list is just as long. It was crazy uh, looking at this list. Uh, for the first time, uh, seeing all the guys that they've they've gotten, all the guys they've lost, uh, primarily John Lester, who, uh, like Kyle Schwarber, uh, is is heading to Washington. Uh, Hugh Darvish, who, as I mentioned, is headed to San Diego. Uh, you've got Tyler Chatwood, another starting pitcher gone. I, I believe they use him more as a relief pitcher, though. Um, yeah. Victor Victor Caratini's gone. Uh, Jason Kipnis, the the second baseman slash center fielder he i believe signed with the braves yep. um albert almora the backup outfielder who a lot of people kind of looked at as a, a potential breakout player um each of these past couple seasons uh you got steven souza jr who once upon a time was one of the the top additions for uh the arizona diamondbacks he didn't he kind of proved he kind of proved to not be the case kind of him and him and yasmani or sorry um yeah yasmani tomas um, we're both kind of in the same boat. We're kind of both guys to be staples in that lineup that ended up move, you know, not, move not it right like, along. Move yeah. it right along. We don't, <laughs> Jose, we don't need to go into that. <laughs> yeah. Jose Martinez, uh, the, the arguably one of the fastest guys in baseball, Billy Hamilton, uh, Ryan Tapera, and the, the late innings relief pitcher, uh, Jeremy Jeffress. Uh, it's, a, it's a long list. Uh, what, what, who sticks out to you uh, as far as this list goes? All right, so first of all, um, fun fact, the Cubs, when they were building up for that 2016 World Series team, a lot of people think it was Anthony Rizzo who actually was the first guy they added to that team. It was actually Albert Almora. Wow. Believe it or not, they, yeah, it was Albert Almora in the 2011 draft. He was the first guy that they officially added who would contribute to that 2016 team. Um <laughs> So it's fun little fun little fact for you, uh, fun little trivia question. If you're if you're a trivia guy and want to stump your baseball friends with that, um, you know I was looking at kind of what the Cubs have been doing this off season, and I didn't realize how busy they were. Um, I mean, I know that they, I knew that they had made some moves that they were trading some guys, they let some guys walk, but as far as the additions go, I was very surprised actually by how much they actually added. Uh, for a team that kind of appears to be at the end of their um, their successful runs, they're kind of like the Brewers in the sense where they're trying to still keep a window of opportunity open. Uh, and I think, you know, kind of looking at some of the additions they have, I wouldn't say that this makes them the best team in the Central. Mm-hmm. It keeps them relevant. It's at least yeah. um, in a position where – one, they could maybe add at the trade deadline or two. Some of these guys could get moved to competitors and they can get some young prospect talent in return. Um, mm-hmm. The addition of Jock Peterson, someone, I don't remember who said it exactly, but someone basically said that Peterson was just a cheaper Kyle Schwarber. Um, mm-hmm. He's not as big in the physique, but he can hit for power and he can yep. hit some bombs. Um, oh, yeah which you wouldn't really expect that from him. I mean, if you've seen Jock Peterson in person, he uh, he's not a big guy by any means, um, mm-hmm. but he's got a very smooth swing and he does believe in the launch angle aspect. Yeah. So uh, he does hit the ball out of the park quite a bit. Uh, Jake Marisnik, he's a good fourth outfielder for them. Um, Matt Duffy, this is a guy that I really hope can have a bounce back. Um, mm-hmm. Duffy was nearly rookie of the year in 2015. Yeah. Uh, he lost out to Chris Bryant, but he put up a heck of a year that season. And ever since then, he's just been derailed by injuries, and he just has not been able to stay healthy for the life of him. Um, and I'm hoping that he can kind of find himself again in Chicago, especially if they end up trading Chris Bryant at some point. Uh, Duffy would seem like a pretty good fit to maybe take third base. Um, if one, he can stay healthy, and two, he can produce off the bench. Um, 
I guess those are the three that really stick out offensively. As far as pitching goes, um, mm-hmm. Jake Arrieta coming back. Uh, I don't know. I know he's aged quite a bit. Mm-hmm. We'll kind of see how that goes. Um, he hasn't been the best pitcher since the World Series run. Yeah. Um, he's been he's been okay. Nothing really to like uh, boggle your eyes at though. Zach Davies, he's a pretty interesting addition too. Um, he spent all those years in Milwaukee, had the one year in San Diego, mm-hmm. and now he's back in the NL Central. Um, it'll be interesting to see how he does with the team. Uh, Andrew Chafin, this guy, uh, yeah, this guy could really be a good addition to their bullpen, I think. Um, when I was looking through their bullpen, I didn't notice they really had any lefties in there. Chafin, mm-hmm. I believe, is the only lefty that they have in the in the bullpen right now. Um you know, he, he is capable of being kind of like a seventh inning guy. He was a good seventh inning man in Arizona when they used him in that role. He can throw multiple innings as well. I know the Diamondbacks experimented with him as a starter at one time. That was when he first broke into the league, though, uh, in 2014. So I don't think that he's really in that fit of frame for the Cubs. But this is a guy that is very capable of being a setup man for them. Um, he's got some. He's got a filthy changeup filthy slider combo as well so uh, yeah you know I think the Cubs have definitely done enough to still make themselves relevant I don't think these additions necessarily make them the division winners but I think Mm -hmm. it does at least keep them within competition Um, because like we've said all week the NL Central is up for grabs and anyone could win it anything could happen in this division Um, so I mean and the Cubs just added themselves to that they could easily be in the mix when it's all said and done Zach Davies has been a really, a, a quietly a really good starting pitcher in his career. Mm-hmm. Um, he was he was one of San Diego's best uh, starting pitchers last year, outside of Daniel Danielson Lamette. Um, a, a low two ERA. Uh, you know he struck dudes out. And he kept the ball in the park. You know they, even in his days in in Milwaukee, he was always pretty good at keeping the ball on the ground um, and keeping it out of the seats. More importantly, so I think he could be really important for the. Uh, for the Cubs kind of to maybe not necessarily form a one-two punch. I know he's not exactly like uh, Kyle Hendricks in terms of ground ball uh, percentages and soft contact rate and stuff like that. But I know Zach Davies is a good pitcher um, and he should be. uh, I think, I think it's very possible that the Cubs could end up getting more out of Zach Davies than the Padres do out of uh, you Darvish. Um, Yes. Unless the Padres win a World Series with Darvish, um, you know, helping. It's very possible, for sure. Looking at uh, looking at how I kind of project my lineup, um, it was actually really easy. As you can see, I kind of went with the right-left, right-left mentality uh, pretty much all the way through. Uh, I like Nico Horner, the second baseman, the young guy. Um, Cubs fans have been really excited to see this kid grow. Um, he doesn't have uh, crazy impressive minor league numbers. Uh, he is right around a, like a career 300 hitter in the minor leagues, which is, you know, impressive, but, um, doesn't hit a lot of home runs, doesn't steal a lot of bases. I think he's just going to be a great on base percentage guy, um, which, you know, will set him right up for the first base from Anthony Rizzo. I know the Cubs have always been really analytically driven, um, even even after Joe Madden's departure. Um, former catcher David Ross has done a pretty good job of kind of keeping keeping the uh, analytical side of the Cubs alive. Um, so I like Anthony Rizzo to be the second hitter. Uh, I like the third baseman Chris Bryant, one of my favorite players in baseball. Um, you know his swing is so effortless. Um, and he, you know, he fields third base pretty well. So I like him as the number three hitter, uh, right behind him is the big bopper, Jock Peterson. Um, it, I, it's very possible. You might see potentially four home runs in a row, uh, from this team at some point, especially when you factor in the five hitter, Javi Baez, um, all, you know, Rizzo, Brian Peterson, and Baez, they're all big home run hitters. Um, they can all hit it out of the park. Um, so I think it's very possible. You could see all four of them potentially hit one, you know, back to back this year uh in center field i have ian hap uh ian hap's a nice switch hitter for them i know some people like to have ian hap higher in the lineup even as high as a leadoff hitter um i think he's better suited in the middle like just past the middle of that lineup uh, he's kind of regressed from where he was he you know his, his rookie year he was like 25 home runs or something like that 
Um, the batting average has kind of come down recently. So I'd like to see if potentially giving him um, a less, uh, I'll say a less uh, valuable spot in the lineup, maybe lower leverage uh, type of situations that he'll be in. I think it's definitely possible that could benefit him. I have the catcher Wilson Contreras uh, hitting eighth or sorry, hitting seventh. And then I have Jason Hayward, the right fielder hitting eighth and then the pitcher spot to round it out at the nine. Yeah. This lineup's pretty flexible for the most part. You could really put a lot of, yeah. a lot of these guys just about anywhere. Yep. Um, my lineup is, has the same guys, although I could see David Bodie being a potential, um, yeah. maybe Warner kind of compete for second base. Uh, by the way, David Bodie is a is a local kid here in Denver. Um, okay, I was actually at his major league debut. It was pretty cool. Uh, he got his first hit in his first at bat, so that was actually a really cool day. Um, getting to be there and see that. But anyway, uh, my mm-hmm. lineup I do have Ian Happ as the leadoff guy in center field. I think he can be a bottom of the order guy, but um, I feel like he's good enough to get on base that he can at least get the offense going to start off a game. Uh, I like him at the top of the order. Chris Bryant, I've got him hitting second. Javier Baez, I think he's going to actually hit third this year. Um, for being a shortstop, mm-hmm. this is a guy that has a lot of power in the bat. Um, I don't know if he's capable. Mm-hmm. I didn't know he can at least hit 30 homers. I'm not sure if 40 is on his belt, but yeah. he can at least get 30 and hit about 280. Um, to me, he's a good number three guy to have. Anthony Rizzo, I've got him hitting cleanup. I've always liked him more kind of in the middle of the order rather than the top of the order. Mm-hmm. I think gives yeah. him just drive in more runs, um, hit for power as well there. Wilson Contreras, I've got him as the number five hitter. Uh, I have Jock Peterson hitting sixth. And I know Peterson uh, was prime. He was either a leadoff guy in L.A. or he was bottom of the order. Um, I think in this lineup, and I could easily see him hitting cleanup too. It was I thought it was interesting they had him as the number four hitter in your lineup. But I think uh, Peterson will probably be more of a middle of the order guy. Um I like him kind of more as the number six hitter. So that's where I've got him. Jason Hayward, we've got him hitting seventh. uh, And I can see Hayward even being a top of the order guy if his bat starts to come around as well. I know he's been a little better with the, with the bat in recent years. Um, So I think, but I think for right now, him hitting seventh is probably where he's going to be, but I could see him being at the top of the order as well. Uh, And I also have Nico Horner being the opening day second baseman. You're right. Cubs fans are really high on him. Uh, They were really excited to see him debut last year. Um, Even though they have David Bodie as well, they have a good mix there where they could go with either guy. But I think Horner is the guy that they're going to go with on opening day. And then the Mm pitcher spot, I've got I've got him up ninth. Yeah, it figures to be uh, a relatively good lineup for them. Um, thankfully, they were able to kind of retain most of the guys that they had last season, um, yes. and uh, should be should be a, a plus for them moving into this year. So. Open up, open up, open up. Okay. Sorry about that, guys. I'm like we had a little technical technical difficulties there. Yeah, we're okay. We're okay. We can keep moving. All right. Looking at uh, the 2021 projected rotation for the Cubs here, um, I think Kyle, uh, Kyle Hendricks has pretty much solidified himself as uh, the main guy for them moving forward. Um, you know, he's like, I, like I mentioned earlier, he's really, really great at keeping the ball in the park and he's really, really great at keeping the ball on the ground. Um, so I like him as the number one. Uh, I do, I do feel really good about Jake Arietta potentially having a bounce back year and a big bounce back year at that. Um, maybe not quite to where he was uh, his previous stint with the Cubs, but uh, I do think he'll be decent for them. Uh, I apologize. It's been snowing really bad. We got a lot of snow pile up on. Yeah, we got we got Um, some weather up here as well. 
Yeah, I'll try to get through this. Um, Zach Davies, I like him as the number three. Uh, I you know talked about him previously. Um, I like Trevor Williams as the number four, as I mentioned. I think I'll have a big bounce back here. Um, and then you have the the younger starting pitcher, Alec Mills, to kind of round it out at the bottom of that. Yeah, my rotation is the same, guys. Um, I do think Hendricks is their ace going forward. Uh, like you said, he's he's like a dart thrower out there. He's really consistent. He can hit his spots. He can keep the ball on the ground. Um, I think he's proved that he is – a uh, guy who you can use in a high leverage situation. You can use him to kind of lead your rotation from here on. Um, Zach Davies, I have him right now as the number two. And I like the point you brought up where he's been quiet. He's been really quietly good over his career. Um, I know kind of towards his tail end in Milwaukee, he had some injury problems where he wasn't able to stay on the field very much. Um, but I think he's, kind of one of those low-key, really good number two guys to have in a rotation um, who may even be able to be their number one. I think even in Milwaukee at one time, he was their number one, um, their mm-hmm. number one pitcher in the rotation. So uh, this guy has good enough experience. I think he's kind of one of those guys you can put at the top right now, and he's young as well. As long as the injuries don't derail him, I think – He's a solid spot to have up there. Uh, Jake Arrieta, I've got yeah. him as the number three, and I would like to see him have a bounce back season as well, uh, kind of find himself again in Chicago. Uh, this could be his last year. Uh, it's very it's very mm-hmm. possible that this might be the last year Jake Arrieta plays, um, and this could be him coming back to Chicago to finish where he broke out or his career really took off. So we'll see. Maybe this, this might be the farewell tour for Arietta this season um I personally hope not but if it is you know let's see he has nothing to really look back on and regret Trevor Williams I've got him as the number four mm-hmm. and then Alec Mills for right now I have him as a number five um I know Alec Mills threw a no hitter last year um but yeah. I'm not I've never really been high on him as a starter I think um I don't want to necessarily hit on him for this but I think I don't think the no hitter was a fluke but I definitely think his no hitter last year was a little Cinderella like um and I'm not sure if he's capable of necessarily doing things like that consistently in the rotation um I like him more as a bullpen piece so um we'll see kind of we'll kind of see how this goes um but for right now I do have Alec Mills as the as the number five starter in the rotation. Yeah. Yeah. This figures to be um, a solid rotation for them this year. Uh, It'll be interesting to see kind of uh, how everyone holds up. Looking at the bullpen. um, I like Craig Kimbrell. Uh, I I guess I'll give him the benefit of the doubt. He's had two short stints with the Cubs so far. Uh, I think he can still get so uh, closes. I think he can still get saves. Uh, I look forward to him potentially bouncing back in full. Uh, Andrew Chafin, Rowan Wick, both those guys figure to be late innings guys for them. Um, I like Jason Adam, Brandon Workman, Brad Week, Dan Winkler all to get uh, some potential middle relief innings for them. And then Gray Fenter, who they actually got in the Rule 5 draft from uh, – Baltimore, uh, he had a, an ERA under two last season in the minors. It'll be interesting to see if uh, they decide to keep him on the ro- on the, the, the roster or not mm-hmm. and um, whether or not he's able to contribute, especially any starts. I think they actually had plans for him to be a starter until recently um, when they picked up uh, Arietta. So it'll be interesting to see where he kind of slides into this uh, bullpen for them. Interesting. Um yeah, but right now I got Craig Kimbrell as a closer too. And, you know, once upon a time, not too long ago, this is a guy who looked like he was on his way to first ballot hall of fame. Uh, but he's had two pretty dismal years with the mm-hmm. Cubs. Um, I don't think it helped that he held out uh, for, yeah. I think it was 2019. Was it that he held out until about June looking for uh, a contract? Maybe. maybe. It was either 2018 or 2019. Yeah. Um but I'm, I'm hoping that he can bounce back and kind of find himself again. Maybe pitching a full season this year will actually help him find that again. Um, but I, I don't imagine that he's going to lose closing duties, but mm-hmm. he could if things really aren't looking good for him in that spot. Andrew Chafin, I've got him as the eighth inning guy right now. Uh, Brandon Workman, he's kind of 
a long relief. He can start yep. some games. He did for Boston back in the day. Um, although his time in Philly last year was very forgettable. Ooh, the, yeah. the Phillies traded for him thinking that they was gonna, he was going to improve the bullpen, and he just mm-hmm. made it worse. Um, so hopefully going to Chicago, he'll be able to find himself and kind of um, get back to a little more success like he had in Boston. Mm-hmm. Uh, Rowan Wick, Jason Adam, Dwayne Underwood Jr., those are guys I've got yep. as middle relief pitchers. Uh, Pedro Strobe, I could easily see him being a seventh inning guy, maybe even the eighth inning man. And then Kyle Ryan, I've got him rounding out that bullpen right now. Yeah, Dwayne Underwood Jr., I, I almost put him in over someone like Dan Winkler or uh, Brad Week. Um, I think it's going to be really close between those guys. I also think Pedro Strope, um, as a non-roster invite, is going to definitely put up some competition. Um, this is going to be a big revolving door as far as a, a bullpen goes. Um, I think that uh, what the Cubs are trying to do is is maybe not necessarily spend big on on relief pitchers like they did with Craig Kimbrell, um, but have a whole bunch of guys that uh, not only can be quality guys for them um, in the trip in AAA, kind of help maybe the younger pitchers develop a little bit, but can also be um, you know crucial members to that bullpen and uh, the big league squad moving forward. Right. Yeah, I agree with that 100. <laughs> percent All right, let's look at some prospects. Now, I went with two guys who aren't necessarily on the prospect list, um, but I I do, I know both of them um, have a lot of potential. Um, Excuse me. The first guy I'm going to start with uh, is the the big guy, the big dog in their group, uh, Braylon Marquez, who is listed there on your screen. Uh, Braylon Marquez is a 22-year-old starting pitcher. Um, he's, he was not drafted. He was actually signed out of, uh, the Dominican Republic, um, believe it or not. Uh, so obviously he made his major league debut last season. Um, but, uh, as I said, believe it or not, he's actually never pitched above high A ball, um, in his career. Mm-hmm. It was another, another case of one of those, one of those, you know, low level starting pitchers who had a lot of potential, um, that, for some reason last season in particular a lot of teams decided to bring them up and and give them an opportunity I know that that was kind of league-wide there were a lot of teams that brought up guys who had never even faced uh double a you know level talent they decided to bring them up he was one of those guys um he was very forgettable in his one start um I believe he pitched like an inning and a third gave up like three runs and then four walks or something like that but his minor league resume is very impressive um, he's a he's a 3.9 or 3.19 ERA across 257 innings, um, and I've kind of jumped on the train that you had the last couple of days. Braylon Marquez has only given up 14 home runs across those 257 innings. Wow. Um, yeah, yeah. He's also the it's that's, that seems to be. I don't know if the baseball is different in the lower minor leagues. And, and so we're so used to seeing players giving up, you know, 30 home runs a season. And so when we see like normal numbers, it looks crazy. Um, but yeah, if only 14 home runs and 257 innings. Uh, he also has 287 strikeouts, which factors to be about 10 and a half Ks per nine um, in five starts. Uh, yeah, 1.7, 1.71 ERA in high A ball. Um, so he dominated his, his talent there. I think it's possible he could see anywhere from double A to the majors this season, uh, being that his service time was kind of his clock was kind of started uh, last season. I do think they'll probably try to whether he's one of the two um, uh, September call ups at the end of the year or whether he comes in for an injury replacement at some point. I do think he might actually find his way onto that short list of guys who could find their way to uh, the major league roster. The next guy I want to cover, um, Sue Yankee and Giant fans. He's probably a familiar name. That's uh, Abiatal Avellino. Uh, he is a 26-year-old shortstop slash second baseman, um, and he was he was the main player in the Andrew McCutcheon trade um, that sent him to the Yankees in 2018. Uh, I was actually really high on him before he got traded. So to see him get moved was, you know, a little unfortunate, but to think that we only, we gave up him and um, one other player in order to get uh, Andrew McCutcheon, I thought that was a great deal. Um, in the last two seasons, Avellino has played 10 major league games. So not a big, um, not a big uh, 
uh, uh, not a big, a lot of experience. Um, but in his minor league career, uh, he has played 763 games down there uh, across a, a whole bunch, probably every level that you can reach. Um, he's a 272 career hitter. Uh, he has 189 steals uh, and 43 home runs. He has a non-roster invite to the Cubs this off or this uh, spring training, so it will be interesting to see if he can maybe net himself a, a bench role with them moving forward, um, or at least provide some competition for a few of the uh, the other potential backup players for them there. The third guy I want to go with um, was a former top top prospect, um, Cole Stewart. Uh, mm-hmm. He was taken fourth overall back in 2016 by Minnesota. Uh, now he's a 26-year-old starting pitcher. The Cubs got him from uh, Baltimore. Um, in his in his five major league starts, um, all of which with Baltimore, uh, he's a four and three record, um, 62 innings, uh, 34 strikeouts. Um, now I know that, that that seems like a, a big difference: 64 innings, 34 strikeouts. Um, he never, he's never really been that. Um, looking at his minor league numbers, uh, he's made 125 minor league starts, um, a decent 3.6.0 or 3.60 ERA, uh, but he's never had a really big uh, ceiling as far as strikeouts go. Um, he's, uh, he's got like 300 more innings than he does strikeouts. It feels like. Um, but he's still a very promising uh, starting pitcher, still a very promising major league career. Um, I think he could be – he's another non-roster invite, by the way, and I think he could be someone that, like Avellino, uh, kind of gives gives some competition to some of the guys uh, maybe ahead of him. Um, he should find his way onto a, a AAA roster where he'll probably be one of the, the main starting pitchers for them. Um, and – like with Avellino and with Marquez, I think he probably looks to see um, at least some major league time with the Cubs this season. Yeah. Uh, I, I thought the name Stewart, I thought Cole Stewart sounded familiar. Yeah. Um, when, yeah. He sent it, when he sent it to me, I just couldn't place where he was, where mm-hmm. he was from. Uh, so my three prospects, uh, the first one I want to look at, I'm going a little untraditional here. Uh, Adbert Alzale, he's a number six prospect. He's actually been with the Cubs the last two seasons on and off. Um, and so far hasn't been the greatest, although he had a much better stint with the club last year, posted a 2.95 ERA in a short stint of games. Uh, he is a starter. He's a right-handed pitcher. Two and two record in the majors, a 4.54 ERA, uh, 33 and two thirds innings. He does have 22 walks, so he his walk, um, okay. his walks are a little right. bit of a concern early on. But he does have 42 strikeouts, so he will he will strike people out. But right now, uh, the walks are a little bit of a concern for me. Uh, 1.4 whip, but he does have a 207 batting average against him. Okay. So he doesn't give up a lot of hits. I think it's more mm-hmm. so the walks have been what's gotten him kind of in trouble uh, in the early goings of his career. He is 25 years old, but I do expect that he will probably play a part for the Cubs this year, um, if not even make an opening day rotation spot. I think that I was kind of, when I was putting my rotation together, I was debating between him and Alec Mills, who was mm-hmm. going to put in. Uh, But I think this guy will see himself in the rotation at some point in the year. The next guy I want to look at is Christopher Morrill. He's their, he's their number 13 prospect. He's a third baseman, 21 years old, uh, hasn't played above single a ball yet. Um, And he hasn't been the most impressive hitter up to this point. Uh, He's got a 243 batting average in the minor leagues, but in 2019, he did hit 284. Uh, so it sounds like the bat is starting to come together. He's played 188 games. He has a 308 on base percentage, 16 homers, 91 RBI, uh, 57 walks, 154 strikeouts, 33 stolen bases in that span. Um, so he does, he is starting to come around for the team. He is starting to uh, make his rounds. He's starting to kind of figure things out. It seems like. Um, this is someone I think Cubs fans should keep an eye on in the near future. I don't expect that he's going to play a part on the major league team this year, but if mm-hmm. he continues to um, progress with the bat and uh, can get some stolen bases in there as well, uh, I could easily see him being a part as soon as next season. Mm-hmm. Um, so Cubs fans should keep an eye on him. And then 
the last guy I want to take a look at is Corey Abbott. And I think this guy actually could make an impact on the team much sooner rather than later. He's a right-handed pitcher as well, 25 years old. Uh, he's likely going to be in double A to start the year, but mm-hmm. I imagine that he might get a spring invite. Um, the Cubs at least should, I would think the Cubs should give him a spring training invite um, based on what his minor league numbers are alone, 16 and 14 across 53 games started 2.84 ERA and 275 and two thirds innings pitched. He's given up only 24 homers in that span, um, which is still really good. That's yeah. uh, still, he, he keeps the ball in the park. He, um, He's a little more seasoned, obviously, for a minor leaguer, but he still keeps the ball in the park. Um, He does have 94 walks, but he has 315 strikeouts in these 53 games started. And that was the number that really jumped out at me. Yeah, 315 strikeouts in 53 games. Um, That's really impressive. This is a guy who most of the time is probably going to get his outs. He's he's a a hurler in that way where he will get his outs via the strikeout. Uh, and then he has a 1.4 whip. So he doesn't give up a lot of hits. He gives up more. So walks, I believe, is kind of based on what that number is, the 94 walks that he has. Um, I wouldn't say it's concerning, but it is something to maybe keep an eye on uh, as he gets up maybe a little closer to the major leagues. They'll have to um, kind of help him with that part of his game. But I think there's a very high ceiling for for Abbott. Um, and like I said, this is a guy I could see maybe being on the team a lot sooner rather than later. Uh, he is a starter for them as well. So who knows? Maybe um, maybe there's a chance that he will be on the team come opening day. Um, but other than that, you know, it's it, it's it's up there for sure. Yeah, it's, it's not a bad uh, group of guys that they have. Uh, looking over their prospect uh, rankings, I guess. Um, uh, it's not a bad group of guys. It'll be interesting to see which of them can really start to stand out. Um, I think the Cubs are kind of at that point now where if they can't get some guys um, from their prospect pool, if they can't get some guys to start coming up and start uh, being you know, kind of key contributors, that they might have to try to um, not necessarily tear down Um, but maybe, maybe look to move on from Chris Bryant, maybe look to um, think, at least think about moving on from an Anthony Rizzo, Um, maybe think about trading um, Javier Baez just to, you know, these guys are getting up into their thirties now. Um, Chris Bryant's almost to his thirties. I know Anthony Rizzo is in his thirties now. Um, And unfortunately, you know, these guys can't be at their, at their peak performance forever. Um, so, you know, if the Cubs aren't looking to, you know, really try to make a run at a World Series here in the next two or three years, um, that's where they could, you know, potentially deepen their prospect pool even more than what it is and, uh, you know, start looking towards the future. Absolutely. I think, um, if anything, it'd be more of like a retool. I don't think it necessarily yeah, be a yeah. full-on rebuild. Yeah, I didn't, um, I didn't want to call it a rebuild. Yeah, it'd be more of like a retooling phase mm-hmm. that they'd probably be going through in the yeah. near future. Agreed. All right. Looking at how uh, I kind of predict the the standings to go for the clubs this year, um, as you can see, it's very close right there in the middle. Um, I think the Cardinals are going to edge everybody else out. Um, I do have them at ninety seven and sixty or ninety seven and seventy five. Sorry, or no, it should be ninety seven. Oh, that that should be sixty five. Yeah. That should be sixty five. That's my that's my bad. You're good. Uh, so yeah, I have them at 97 and 65. Um, I think they're still definitely the cream of the crop in the in the NL Central, although the gap is significantly significantly closer than what it has been. Uh, I like the the Indians. Or sorry, <laughs> the wrong Cleveland. Or, oh my God, <laughs> wrong Ohio team. I like the Cincinnati Reds to finish 91 and 71. I like the Cubs at 90 and 72. And then the Brewers right behind them at 87 and 75. Um, I think all, I mean, as you can see, all three of those teams are within four games of each other. And uh, it's, it's going to be up and down all season. Um, The only real true outcome uh, in this division are the, uh, the Buccos down there at the bottom Um, 50 and 112 record that I have for them. It's it's gonna be it's gonna be rough at Pittsburgh, but for me at least, I could be looking at like first row seats in the outfield for like fifteen bucks on SeatGeek. So yeah, there uh, you go. 
<laughs> I, I look forward to uh, at least hopefully uh, if we can have some fans in some sort of capacity, I look forward to at least catching some Buccos games. Yeah, well, my standings are a little different. Um, okay. I do have the Cardinals winning the division. I think they are the better team when it's all said and done. Um, but I think because the Central can really play out anyway, mm -hmm. I have a feeling we might see, quote unquote, underachievement from most of the you teams. Could. Could. Uh, I think the Cardinals will be 91 and 71. Um, I think that's a good record for them, especially because they're – um, you know, adding Nolan Arnato to the mix, mm -hmm. it's really hard to expect guys changing scenery to um, really perform elite like they do uh, or like they did before. Mm -hmm. So I think 91 and 71 seems like a good record for them. I got the Brewers finishing second, 85 and 70 and 77. I think that they're going to surprise some people this year. I know that um, it doesn't seem like they've done a whole lot this offseason. They're still a pretty young team, but I think they've got good management and good coaching there that um, they're going to be able to at least uh, overtake the other three in the division. Uh, I've got the Reds finishing 81 and 81. Um, sorry, Cubs fans. I got the Cubs finishing <laughs> 75 and 87. Um, and it's just because I think this is really the last chance the Cubs have to – be be a winning team mm -hmm. um there's a lot of rumors that chris bryant's going to get traded uh anthony rizzo could be right behind because he's a free agent after this season um i i and i just feel like too the the brewers and cardinals at least are just a little better i think the reds are even a little better um so i have the cubs at 75 and 87 on the year and then the pirates 61 and 101 uh, i tried to be i tried to be nice to them but i don't like predicting teams to get 100 losses or 100 yeah. wins but um the fact that the pirates really just don't seem to have a lot yeah. for them this year and considering how the other four teams in the central yeah. are compared to them um i just don't realistically see them being all that great of a club uh, so 61 and 101 seems like the the best I could do for yeah. them as far as that goes. So I thought about potentially coming up a little bit for my my uh, prediction for the Pirates, but you know they they know what they're doing. Um, they they understand where they're at in the rebuild process, um, and I think they're uh, I, I think they're they're definitely. They're definitely going to start coming back up um, after this season. Yeah, I hope so, with, too. With that said, we are uh, here at the end of our uh, kind of our slides here. Um, you can always find us on our different social medias. You'll notice there's a brand new one down there at the bottom. Um, to go over this list, you can find us on Facebook at Dugout. Um, you can also search at Real Dugout Talk. I believe when you search Dugout Talk now on Facebook, we are the first page that pops up. Um, okay. We're the most active page that has that name on Facebook, which is awesome. Um, you can find us on Twitter at Dugout Talk One. You can find us on Instagram at Real Dugout Talk. You can find us here on YouTube at Dugout Talk. And you can find us now on TikTok at Dugout Talk. Um, we, we got 672 72 views on our very first TikTok uh, that I posted yesterday, which is absolutely phenomenal. If any of you guys are, are just watching us for the first time who noticed um, our, our video yesterday, I appreciate you guys. Uh, you'll, you'll see, you know, we appreciate you guys every single day. Um, and the, just to, to kind of wrap up our social media, um, I will be posting more TikToks. I'll be posting more historical content on, on Instagram. Um, and to kind of transition real quick here, uh, we officially have merchandise uh steven yes. you kind of set this up i'll let you take it from here yeah so hard to believe we've already been doing this for a month now um yeah. we're four weeks in on the breakdowns we started doing the shows at the very end of january and we've kind of been we were kind of brainstorming some ideas on like what we needed to do to you know because we're trying to get some income off of this sure. as well um and what better way to do that then to start selling some merch. Um, so we have a store now. It's called Dugout Talk. You can find us on Teespring. Uh, we have t-shirts. We even got this cool little tote <laughs> organic bag right here. Um, we have hoodies, tank tops, sweaters, pretty much anything that you want. Now, granted, um, 
I know that this little black box on the logo here, it doesn't look yeah. the greatest, but we're working on getting some new logos here. Um, trying to, yeah. we're going to have some more variety as time goes on. Uh, we've also got phone cases. What's that for the phone? Is that a, that doesn't look like a phone case. It doesn't look like it covers the whole phone. I um, I yeah, I couldn't necessarily get it to work that way for some reason. Oh, 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 oh okay. I tried to get okay. it. Um, so as I was designing a lot of this stuff yesterday, it was a little tricky getting most of it. Uh, we do mm. have uh, face masks. Oh, that oh. looks really, I yeah. might actually one of those. Yeah, so we got face masks. We've got wow, little fanny cool. packs. Uh, we even have those like neck, Neckers. those neck gaiters. Uh, yeah. We also have uh, coffee mugs. Um, awesome. Granted, we did not we did not set the prices on this stuff. No, this, is, no. uh, this is it would be standard. much lower. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so we're not we're not pressuring anyone to buy anything. But if you're interested in this stuff, yeah. anything helps. Um, please feel free to support us in this way. This is kind of like our, uh, I guess, equivalent of Patreon right yeah. now. Is yeah. Having this store, uh, so anything helps us. If you wanna, if you wanna buy some of this merch, please feel free to do so. We uh, really would appreciate that. Um, and like I said, we'll have more variety as time goes on. Yeah. We're gonna be working on some new designs and some new logos uh, for this for just our brand. Um, so yeah, we're kind of getting into that now. We're just trying to make ourselves out there. Uh, we're already a month into this. It's kind of yeah. crazy how fast crazy. that some of this has been going, and even our YouTube channel's been getting a lot of recognition. Mm -hmm as of late uh our cardinals episode yesterday this may not seem like yeah. a huge deal but, it's not, but uh, it within rough. the within the first hour we had eight views yesterday which that was a record for us um so thank you guys uh for those of you who are sharing our our episodes for those of you who are following us in our social media pages our facebook mm -hmm. page also blew up yeah yesterday. i I, I love all of you guys who started following us on yeah facebook. yes thank you guys so much for that um it's just been great to see over the last few days uh just the amount of attention that this has been getting and the amount of support that's been coming through um but yeah this is uh really a lot to it's a lot to process <laughs> um just yeah. seeing this this week is uh there's been times where i've just been like i don't really know what to say like this is uh this is all kind of moving it's moving fast but it's yeah. uh, it's great to see it at the same time so uh thank you again to everybody out there who has been supporting us um either whether it's been from the very beginning or as recently mm -hmm. as, to, as yesterday um, yep. we're so grateful for all of you guys um, and uh, we just hope to be able to continue doing this uh, as consistently as possible over the course of the of spring training and the regular season yep. and then into yep. the 2021 off season yeah and just just a uh, just a note um, if any of you who are watching this um, or any sort of have any even the slimmest idea of uh, maybe some sort of uh, graphical design, um, logo design, feel free to get a hold of us. Um, I would love nothing more than to take some of take some of our proceeds that we get for merch. Um, and, and I mean, even even though it just well, I would love to pay you to potentially make some um, some cool logos for us. We're looking to actually get kind of a dugout um uh and then something to go with a dugout as our logo being that our yeah. name is dugout talk so if you i know we've we've been we're, we're going to be in touch with a, a few people who kind of have an idea of what they're no, uh doing but you know if you do and you know you wouldn't mind making a few extra bucks on the side and you know uh to be able to be recognized um for for a brand that you know at least at least you know um for as small as we are is actually growing relatively quickly um, absolutely get a hold of us. Uh, you can message us on Facebook, YouTube, um, Instagram, Twitter, TikTok, you know, it, feel free to get a hold of us. Let us know uh, what you can do. Uh, and, you know, we can start spitballing some ideas um, and maybe, maybe go work something together. Absolutely. Um, because you guys are just as important part of this as, as we are. Um, yep. But again, Thank you all uh, yep. for being with us this week as we broke down the NL Central. We've got two more divisions to go. Uh, we got the AL West coming to you on Monday. Texas Rangers uh, will be will be covering them on Monday. So if you know any Rangers fans or if you have anything yep. on the Rangers that would be useful for us, uh, please let us know. We're going to have a little different format for you yeah. as far as slides go. Um, gonna change. We're going to change up visuals a little bit just to uh, kind of experiment with some new things. 
uh, I don't know if you guys have noticed, but I have the outdated version of the Office, of Microsoft Office. Um, so we're going to be getting the newer version up for you. It's, it looks a lot better than what the older version is. So, um, but yeah, that's going to do it uh, for us here this weekend. Uh, this week, we hope you guys have a great weekend. Um, stay safe, stay warm. Yep. You know, yep. it's been really cold in most of the country. Uh, we mm -hmm. send our we send our hearts out to Texas. I know you guys aren't used to. Yeah. We, you guys aren't we you guys aren't used to this weather. Um, so we hope yeah. that everyone is doing well and staying warm and staying safe. Absolutely. Um, the two of us have experienced it this week too. So oh, yeah. Oh, uh, yeah. it's you know, we're all we're all kind of in this together at this point. But it's, thank it's you guys. cold here eight months a year. Yep. Same here. Um, but thank you guys again. Have a great weekend and we will see you Monday with the Rangers. See you guys.